morning, everyone. Well, this morning, for a third time, I have tried to encourage the government to raise the bar of political advertising. I introduced voter protections in political advertising, private members' bill. Three, uh, the vast majority of Australians want to see regulation around political advertising. As a society, we currently protect consumers in consumer advertising against misleading and deceptive claims. We do not want Australians to be scammed when they are making consumer transactions. So why are we not protecting voter rights in the same way as we are protecting consumer rights? Why are the major parties wanting to keep open the loophole and the right to lie in their political advertising? The overwhelming majority of voters want this to change. Yes and no voters in the referendum want advertising that they can trust. They want a debate based on facts. So I urge the government, who have indicated they are willing to discuss this, willing to contemplate it, in opposition supported it. They have an interim joint, joint standing committee uh, recommendation to implement this. So they have a choice. Do this now, well ahead of the next election. Support the, this bill from the crossbench. That way it can't be seen as a partisan political move. It is a centrist move to raise the bar in Australian politics. We currently have a few very real examples of lies in political advertising. From the last, uh, last election, we had, for example, Clive Palmer with uh, his United Australia Party with clearly misleading and deceptive ads. We have a history of this when it comes to ads uh, from the major parties, if we go back to 2016 Medi-Scare or 2019 death taxes. And currently, in our transition to renewable energy, we have a scare campaign occurring on our coast, falsely alleging that somehow whales and marine animals will be impacted by offshore floating wind farms. This is a clear case of misleading and deceptive advertising where there is no faith, there is no study, there is no scientific study to back up the claim being made. But people, ordinary people going about their lives with a genuine concern are impacted by this misleading and deceptive advertising. So I call on the government to implement this legislation. It's time Australians and polit politicians, political parties were held to the same standards as businesses and, uh, and, and, and sale of good and consumers. We know Australian elections and referendums are now also see third party organisations play a big part in how the campaigning and uh, the messaging that comes out. We've seen Advance Australia backed uh, by elites, by vested interests, with a clear political affiliation with the member for Oringa, the previous member for Oringa, Tony Abbott, a director of Advance Australia, pushing misinformation. We cannot have Australian elections descend into the purview of fake information, fake advertising. So it's time we do something about this, and I urge the government and the members of this place to respect their voters' wishes and pass and support this bill. There's really broad support for banning lies in political advertising. And there are really only two arguments against it. The first is that it impinges on a right to free speech, and the second is that it's too hard. But on the first, we balance between different rights all the time. And the right for voters to be informed when they go to elections is more important, uh, you know, is a really important right that we also have to protect. Um, it is not too hard. South Australia did this in 1985 and it has worked for that long and it makes politicians think twice uh, before they speak. So we can do this. People want it. It's really important. And the government now has a decision uh, whether it values, whether it wants to support Advance Australia and prioritise the right to tell lies and political ads over voters' rights to be informed when they go to elections. 26,900 Australians have voiced their support for truth in political advertising laws in Australia Institute petitions since 2020. 
Australia Institute polling research consistently finds that the vast majority of Australians support truth in political advertising laws. Most recently, 87% in support in the Australia Institute's exit poll after the referendum. Given this depth of community support, I strongly urge all members of parliament to give serious consideration to Zali Stegall's Truth in Political Advertising Private Members Bill. The reality is, in Australia, it's perfectly legal to lie in a political ad, and it shouldn't be. Voters should go to the polls confident that they have the full facts, and that can't happen if misleading advertising is legal. As a demonstration of the depth of this popular support, I'm proud to hand over to Zali Stegall the 26,900 signatures that are just a fraction of the support in this country for truth and political advertising laws. Thank you. And can I say, on the old chestnut of we can't do this because of freedom of speech, I have been asked this many times. We do not say that a manufacturer can make an outlandish claim about a product and scam buyers into parting with their money, we do not say it's okay to do that on the basis of freedom of speech. We accept that there is a balance that must be met between protecting consumers, not allowing them to be scammed, and what is actually misleading and deceptive advertising. So we are simply saying it is time for politicians, political parties, and third party organisations involved in the debate and campaigns to be held to the same standard. Zali, have the government said uh, whether they'll include identical provisions to this uh, in the government bill uh, that deals with uh, political advertising? And for both of you, uh, can we get an update on whether the Special Minister of State has consulted you about spending and donation caps and where they should be set? The I have been pressing the Labor Party whilst it was in opposition and since the last election in government uh, for some time around this provision, that it's so badly needed. There has been statements by the Prime Minister and the Special Minister for State that they, in principle, support it. I've asked the Prime Minister in question time and he acknowledged the need and acknowledged the willingness to do something about this and to work with me. My difficulty is there is often a vast chasm between what political parties sometimes say they will do and what ultimately comes out in legislation. So whilst I welcome those shows uh, of uh, intent, what I call upon is for the government to actually do it. They can do it in a more omnibus style bill with greater electoral reform when it comes to donations and other things, or they can address misinformation now by doing this, uh, this bill to ensure it is in place before the next election. So whilst there has been productive discussions with the Minister for State, uh, we, I have not myself seen any exposure draft or uh, been privy to the government's uh, any confirmation of intention of what will be included and whether or not they will in fact deliver on this issue. And noting that voters of all persuasion, whether they be one nation, nationals, liberal, labour, greens or independent voters, the vast majority want this. So this should be a wake-up call to politicians to respect voters' wishes. Still radio silence on, on caps with John Farrell? Um, the government has indicated that it intends to seek consensus on electoral reform. And um, I've continued to have conversations with the government about what that electoral reform package should include. Um, I've also indicated to the government that there is a package of reforms that would get the support of, of the crossbench and potentially the Greens should the opposition not be willing to commit to the types of reforms that the government has committed to to date. So those conversations are ongoing and I hope that we'll see some movement on electoral reform shortly. Can I ask one about industrial relations? The floor view was that we passed in the Senate last week. Do you have a commission on whether you'd like to see them passed so effectively carved out of the overall bill or do you think it should be that in the whole? Um, I'm glad to see that those four parts of the industrial relations legislation have been uh, removed in the Senate and would happily debate them and, and pass them in the House. I think it makes sense to consider the non-controversial parts first so they can pass through and then take a bit longer to consider the parts of that omnibus bill uh, that have a more divisive 
effect on, on the community. So I'm all for seeing those, those um, separate parts of the IR bill put through the House as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, I echo that. I strongly support uh, the separation, the carve out of those four sections of legislation and urge the government to put them on for debate in the House as soon as possible um, and that they can be passed. That enables the provisions, which is payments to uh, in relation to post-traumatic stress for first responders and very important provisions to be able to then be rolled out by 1st of January. So really important. I guess I would like to say to voters, government has a tendency to present omnibus legislation where they throw in lots of different aspects. And often in that situation, you have controversial elements of legislation that require time, that require consultation, and then good, straightforward parts of legislation. And the goal, right, this is not by accident, the goal of why government does this is they are trying to wedge uh, members of parliament to support the omnibus bill on the basis of the good provisions. So here is an opportunity for the government to be fair income, to be legitimate, support those pieces of legislation that are uncontroversial and then take the time to consult and work on the rest of that bill that has got some issues and concerns. We need to try and make legislation right from first instance because it will impact millions of lives, so many thousands of small businesses and they need government and this place to do its job by doing thorough consultation and work to ensure legislation that is ultimately passed is going to work for the population and for businesses and not have unintended consequences. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with all our latest research and work, sign up to our newsletter. Delivered every fortnight, it includes behind the scenes updates from Richard Dennis, an exclusive cartoon from Judy Horacek, details for our upcoming events and webinars, as well as explainers, graphs, and not to mention the latest cutting edge research and analysis from the team here on the key issues that are facing Australia. Click the button on your screen to check it out.